we're going to be having two speakers, myself on documents and digital workflows. And then as a complimentary topic, I've invited Reva Solutions to come and talk about their um, solutions for integrating with document management systems. Uh, this is the Digital Services Forum as usual. Um, if you're new here, if it's your first time, please introduce yourself um, and where you're from and what your role is in the comments. We do collect those comments and um, analyze them at the words, and we want to add you to our uh, mailing list and, and the rest as, as far as future meeting notices um, and give you access to the forums and, and all of that. Um, this is being recorded. The recording will be made available on our community forum and on YouTube. John, am I missing anything from the standard introduction there? No, it sounds good. I'll post the link out in the chat once if we get everybody logged in so that they, they have that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started then. So this is going to be a bit different from uh, past talks that, that I've done in this forum in that this is more questions I'm really interested in and direct some thought on those questions. It's not answers. Um, uh, I've got a link here to my LinkedIn profile later on in this presentation. I've got a link directly to our blogs forum in, in the digital services uh, uh, community forum. Um, I'm hoping we start some talks uh, amongst each other offline, and then maybe we can bring in more thought on this later, this topic later on. Um, so I've been thinking about documents and digital workflows for a while now. I've, I've had a couple of customers that have had, um, how would you say, issues related to documents. So uh, one customer is really struggling with, we've got a big digital transformation initiative going on and I can't measure my workflows and I'm having problems uh, figuring out what's going on. Our usability scores are in the pits. We bought a great tool. Why, why are we having problems with it? Um, and as I got looking at, at what they were doing, a, a lot of that looked to me like they were trying to use ServiceNow like Outlook. It, it was emails and files and attachments everywhere on generic cases and all the good details of what's going on in each of those cases was all in files and documents. Um, so, so that was one thing that got me thinking about this topic. And the other is I've got another customer that's got some extremely complex document um, management requirements that are really challenging to, to fully meet um, and trying to work solutions for them. So again, this is gonna be more questions I'm asking as I'm starting to, to uh, try and figure out what are the place of documents and digital workflows. So first of all, just a couple of things about documents. For, for one, I, I think it's a blob of information. It's essentially a container with some information in it. There are ways to go inside that container, read that information. That information might be text, numbers, binary information, video, audio, just about anything, nothing, nothing too shocking there. Um, and around that document or that file, uh, we've got meta information, information about that thing. when was it created, who created it, uh, version control, um, security permissions, all of that sort of thing. And there's a couple of basic things that I see that our customers do with documents in, in a ServiceNow uh, constraint. The first is your basic programming CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete. You've got a process, you've got to create a document, you got to read information from the document, you got to update it, you got to delete it. That's kind of like the lowest level mechanical version. It doesn't really say why you're doing those. Uh, the next uh, items on this table, those are more the why. Um, so one is to provide additional contextual information that's relevant to the workflow. I've got an incident management case. I've got an attachment that screenshots of here's what's happening. And that's something that can be really hard to describe in text and notes, but really simple to catch screenshot. Emails in HR cases, even like videos of interviews I've seen uh, used as documents or attachments in, in HR cases. The next major uh, usage is as where the document itself is the subject of a workflow. Approve this document, send this file to a supplier, that sort of thing. Next is we want to get data that's in a document, store it someplace, and be able to use it. 
Um, common thing that everybody does, you go to the doctor, they want your driver's license, they want your insurance card, they scan them these days. And we want to get that information as actual data, not just a picture of your uh, insurance card um, and driver's license. The last major usage here that, that I've got listed, and I'm sure there's more, these are just the ones I've been thinking about, is around memorializing the output of a process. So tax day is coming up. I've already filed mine because I'm ahead of the game on that. But your tax return, you go through the whole workflow in TurboTax or, or, or whatever, your tax prep software. At the end, you've got a PDF document that is the memorialization of that, and you send that off to the IRS and pay your taxes or get your refund. So I've got some observations I, I've been looking at for a while now in, in companies' digital transformation uh, journeys. So the first is that I think a lot of organizations have a mindset that I call peak filing cabinet level of technology. So I've got my information, it's in a file or a document, could be paper, digital, doesn't really matter. We're working with them the same way. I've got business processes that get that into of that file, put it in the file or move it, delete it around um, in the cabinet. And your people or your systems either know where the file is because they put it there or they use indexing or search, which is basically just a fancy card catalog to get that information out of that file. To me, that's not really what we're going for in digital transformation. We've, we've made that filing cabinet metaphor as efficient as it can possibly get, but we're missing the boat for real digital transformation. So what I find when orgs are doing business this way, they often for financial reasons and sort of like, we got to get the MVP of this thing out. They find that the fastest, easiest way to digitize a process is just wrap workflows around those document and files. I'm pretty sure you've all seen service catalog items that are essentially, here's a PDF or Excel form, download it, fill it out, reattach that form back into the, the, the service catalog request, submit it. The service processor has to open that form. That's the type of... Uh, behavior I'm talking about here. And that's kind of like the worst example of that. There's various hybrids one. Um, and right off the bat, I'm, I'm going to propose here, you're not getting the main benefits of digitization when you do this. That information is locked in that document and it's not really being extracted. The workflow isn't able to change its direction based on information. Going back to earlier, it's just a blob of information. The workflow doesn't know what's in that blob, it doesn't care what's in that blob. And therefore you can't do automation as rigorously and, and thoroughly as if you did know that. So I've got a proposition here. We need to break out of this filing cabinet mindset to fully achieve our digital transformation potential. I don't necessarily know what the future of that looks like. I've been reading a bunch, um, researching. I'm still forming my ideas of how breaking out looks. I do see two key challenges going on right now. So the first one is there's that information in those documents and files and we need to understand it. And this last year has blown up the, the IT world around understanding what's in documents and files. And that's the world of generative AI. One of the, the first use cases we're doing here on platform is summarizing case notes outside of uh, summarizing knowledge articles, um, summarizing essentially documents and creating that as a new attribute that's more concise, more uh, direct, so that now people can find and access that information in the document. The document's still there. You can still dive all the way down to, to the document, but in most cases, that case summary, that document summary is going to be sufficient to help you know if you've got the right file or not. And that's a huge game changer. That's something that completely breaks the, the peak filing cabinet metaphor. We never had a, a technology that could actually understand the document's contents really before now. The second key challenge here is how do we change our business processes to then fully utilize that new understanding of what's in the document? Um, 
and, and then use that as part of the process. This is where, um, there's just a link here at the bottom to our digital services forum. This is where I'm hoping uh, on these two questions, particularly the latter one here, I'm wanting uh, hopefully to spawn some dialogue around that because I think that is on us. This is the part where I don't think Gen AI can change our business processes. It can suggest changes. It can analyze and find um, Gen AI and, and machine learning can analyze our processes that can find inefficiencies in them, but it can't figure out what business change needs to happen. And then the whole people dynamic of embracing that change and, and really changing how we do business and breaking away from that filing cabinet. So I'm, this is one of my main topics of, of intellectual interest right now. And I'm hoping uh, you all have some thoughts on that. And I'd like to hear your thoughts. Seeing how this is a service now meeting, and I didn't put this part on the uh, uh, chart here, but we do have technologies. I mean, there's the document services on platform. There's attachments on platform. There's, I think, the drastically underused um, document intelligence capability that can actually, again, like take that semi-structured information, driver's license, insurance card, and turn that into data and fields that that then we can can use in our processes. Um, at its core, like ServiceNow is a workflow platform and workflows have documents. That's just the nature of the beast. And I think you're going to find we're awesome for a lot of basic uses for, for documents. We, we've got some great functionality there. Um, as far as our instances, and, and this is, again, coming directly for, from working with some challenges with customers, our standard production instances are four terabytes of storage. And these days, that's not extremely huge if you're talking documents. It is if you're talking databases, that, that, that's a, a pretty decent size. This isn't just cheap cloud storage. Um, it's not when you're paying for an instance, you're paying for um, fully uh, replicated mirrored copies of the full app stack. You're paying for the network infrastructure, um, the, the whole shebang there. It's not just file storage. Um, your primary purpose is running workflows. Those workflows have a lifespan that I'll say is comparatively short. It, it's seconds, days, months, maybe single digit years. It's not decades. You, you don't think about a work, a single workflow executing over the course of a decade. On the other hand, it's not at all uncommon with documents to think of documents living for decades. Um, at one of my former companies, we had to keep some documents around for, for life of the product plus a certain number of years. And that could be 100 plus years that you had to keep um, safety certifications and stuff around. Um, that's really far beyond the bounds of what we think of as a, a workflow execution and even accounting for data and analytics and historical information. Um, that's a long time. Uh, max file size um, for uploads. And the default is a two gigabyte per each file. Um, that's not that big for certain classes of documents, let's say videos of interviews for, for HR use cases. You can adjust that, but all those documents and attachments count against your instance quota. So pro tip here, when you're creating your apps and you're starting to use documents, those documents are going to become one of the largest consumers of space of that four terabytes, understand your organization's information retention policies, understand how those apply to those documents, and then automate the, the management of those documents. What, what you'll find is like, you might want to keep metadata or something around incident cases for a couple of years, but do you really need to keep the screenshots that were associated with that or the emails that were sent um, to and from on that? five, seven, 10 years down the line. If you don't have a plan for this up front and you don't automate this up front, what you're going to run into is uh, both instance performance challenges, like why is my uh, instance running so slow? And also just compliance challenges with licenses to us as you exceed that four terabyte uh, limit. It's vastly easier to manage these documents and figure out those life cycles at the beginning when you're designing and implementing this than it is to come back and try and reverse engineer that at the end. So that's really 
it for content and thoughts I had. Like I said, this isn't like particularly about insights or anything like that. It's more your questions. Please do go to the forum. Please do if you've got input here. I'd really like to hear from you. With that, I think on documents, we've got a better together story when we're talking really heavy document management solutions. As I said, I think we got a great 80% um, on the good old 80-20 rule for most casual process document needs. Our current onboard uh, on-platform capabilities are sufficient. Um, when you start exceeding those, when you've got extreme security or physical segregation uh, requirements like this information must be in this company and cannot leak country and cannot leave this country um, and people from other countries cannot access it. If you've got super heavy version control or comparison, super large files, super rapidly updating files, um, uh, large volumes of large rapidly updating files, you see how each one of those things kind of compounds this problem of managing documents. That's probably not the type of thing you're going to want on our instance. And then I already mentioned those extremely long retention needs. If you've got those, you may be better off using a dedicated document management system and integrating it with your workflow. So the documents are stored elsewhere and you've got links to those documents uh, to view them, manage them, et cetera, get checksums, all of that uh, from your workflows. Uh, Integration Hub is uh, great for that, and uh, one of the uh, solutions that I found in exploring one of my customers' needs is Reva Solutions. That what they've got is some store apps around Integration Hub um, that integrate with some dedicated document management systems that I think provide really good solutions for all of these type of challenges I'm listing up here. Um, they're not the only one out there. We, we've got native integrations with integration hub with, I'll say some of the lighter weight document management systems, things like SharePoint, that sort of thing. Um, Reva is the solution for, for this class that of what I found seems most appropriate. Um, we're really interested in uh, what you all are using for your documents, but this is again, a case better together. Use ServiceNow for the strength of its workflows and integration use a dedicated document management system for the strength of doc managing those documents, just like you would use SAP for managing your financials, just like you would use Workday for managing your HR. Integrate them together, you got a better together story. Uh, with that, uh, Reva Solutions, as I mentioned, uh, they were involved in one of my customers. I really like their solution and I thought they would make a great compliment to these thoughts here. So I asked them to speak here at the, at the forum. So I'd like to introduce uh, Terry and Eswar, and uh, with that, guys, uh, take it away. Hey, Charles, thank you very much. That was great. It was a very nice segue into what we're going to be talking about as well. So uh, welcome, everybody, to the session, and thank you, ServiceNow, for having us uh, participate in this session. So my colleague, Ishwar, is going to be presenting our solutions for integrating document management systems, or what's called enterprise content management with ServiceNow, but I just wanted to give you a little background on Reva Solutions. So my name is Terry Mullally. I'm general manager of Reva Solutions. We're a systems integrator, um, primarily in North America, but with our new ServiceNow and enterprise content management solutions, we've expanded uh, globally. So we, we are doing implementations for customers in, in, uh, in EMEA and in Asia and in Latin America, et cetera. So if they're, you're calling in from there, uh, that's great. Uh, but just a bit more in terms of Reva, we're a systems integrator, we're a ServiceNow partner. So we're a services partner for ServiceNow, as well as a build partner. On the content management side, we've been doing that for uh, almost a couple of decades now. Uh, so we're an open text partner and uh, all of the applications and content management systems that open text own. We're also a box partner. So that's a, a SaaS based uh, enterprise content management solution. We also have experience in many other content management systems, and we're also an SAP partner as well. Um, but that really means that we specialize in digital automation process, but as a document-centric uh, process. So as Charles was talking about, in terms of some of those examples, there are many, many examples of ServiceNow processes, whether it's in HR or legal or services or field operation or vendor lifecycle management. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of different use cases are very document centric. And that's where we come in helping with that integration between the two. Um, so wanted to just point out that uh, we're also available. You can check us out more at revasolutions.com. I posted my LinkedIn link uh, in the chat earlier. And um, you can also find us on the ServiceNow store. If you search for Reva, R-E-V-A, you'll see that we have a number of connections into Box, into OpenText, different solutions from them as well. And uh, again, I wanted to thank you for having us present today. And I'm going to pass this over to Ishwar, who is our principal and technical architect. And he's going to be talking about our integration between ServiceNow and the various content management solutions, which I'm sure many of you have. And we'd love to hear from you in terms of what you have as content management solutions and what you'd like to see integrated, uh, because we can obviously continue to build those solutions as well. So Ishwar, if you're ready, I'll pass the, this over to you. Thank you, Terry. Uh, can you see my screen? Can... Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Terry. Good morning, good afternoon, evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for giving this opportunity. Uh, I'm going to go through a few slides and then I will uh, try to do a, a real-time demo of a couple of uh, red actions uh, uh, and integrations that we have. Uh, so the value proposition like Charles uh, clearly laid out uh, actually uh, uh, that how we can be better together with uh, with the document management, dedicated document management, integrate with ServiceNow. Our goal during the uh, during all the integration that we do between the two systems is to present the users to to be able to make easily make decisions and move their business process forward, and get the value add they can get with all the content that is residing in the in in the document management systems. Our goal is to enable the users with all the advanced features like version control, uh, preview uh, preview documents without downloading, version uh, like you know uh, redaction, annotation, and other things that are understanding document. All the features that a document management provides, we would like to we we strive to give that all that functionality seamlessly within the service norm interface. The big advantage of that is almost every customer. Uh, and end user is all is mostly when they are in service now they don't want to go back and log into another system like document management and go look for documents so and also uh, the other biggest thing that we are looking to do is deliver on single source of truth uh, avoid the duplication of content uh, the content created in service now uh, it doesn't get replicated to content server instead of that just use the document management system while working with your workflows uh, within within service now Uh, reasons for integrating with the uh, DMS. Uh, so, uh, like Charles said, there were there are some heavy document versioning. Uh, uh, in addition to that, a lot of times we see that uh, uh, you know granular access control uh, compliance. That is the biggest one of the biggest drivers. So, even within a record, when when you are working on a case or any any service request within the document within the within that several documents. There, there could be a lot of granular uh, access control requirements and document management is made for providing these uh, highly granular, uh, like somebody can, uh, what if the security policy has that it's only available to a certain kind of people beyond the regular user group management and things like that. Uh, the other big thing that we have seen is, uh, you know, uh, document formats and preview. With the document management, you can upload any kind of documents uh, like the office drawings, the PDF tips, and you can preview them without downloading. And a lot of customers love that because they can quickly preview a document. If it's useful, they can down, they can open it up and review, uh, enhancing their, uh, you know, workflow process. So when we have been integrating, like Terry said, uh, we have been doing document management for a while, but uh, with service now in the last three, four years, uh, in the in the, all the workflows that we have done, we have seen uh, two kind of patterns uh, in the integration. One is uh, the, there are there are documents that are generated in service now, or they get started by by the user by uploading them in service now, and the customers would like to have these documents to be in in uh, content server either during the process so that that can be, you know, and then move from there to work on them uh, in parallel while uh, reviewing a case or working on a request. Or sometimes uh, the customers want all the doc all the case management to be done and the all the documents related to the case 
to be in service now till uh, till a stay like when the case is closed. Once the case is closed, maybe after 30 days or 60 days, uh, the customers are uh, looking to archive the content and also the case data uh, together in, into a document management system from long-term archival and retention policy, retention that they have, like we said, sometimes customers have to keep for 100 years or 50 years or whatever the retention policies they have. The advantage of this approach is once they move it, they don't have to say apply the same retention policies in service now and replicate it every time a business rules change. Uh, documents are in, in uh, centralized and every document that is generated from any system in the organization will follow the same retention policy. The other, other scenario where we have seen is uh, there are conditions like when there are a very strict compliance requirement like GDPR or it could be anything where they cannot have sensitivity of the document. They cannot have the document in service now at any point in the workflow. Or there could be a kind of document like large, large documents, like it could be like a drawings, heavy videos that that service now is not the best product to to handle them customers would like to not store anything in service now but directly uh, store them in in a dms system and able to interact them with them directly from within service now so it, they were looking for a seamless integration so that's where the the ui comes in and embedding the, the dms ui within service now so these are the two patterns or scenarios that we have seen and we have seen more and more customers moving into the uh, moving into the either the generally uh, trying to have the UI so they can uh, real time upload and download documents from DMS. So as part of the integration patterns, like Charles said, we have uh, on the store app we have integration hub, which is what we have. We have a lot of flow actions uh, that come and that integrate with different uh, DMS. Uh, uh, like open text box or examples. So here, uh, using the integration hub and flow, we can move documents from service now to the DMS and back. And that's one interaction way to do that. And a lot of times, sometimes what we have seen is with this pattern, uh, we are actually moving the documents from service now, but embedding a link to the document. So documents are not stored in service now, but you have links to the documents within service now. So user can click on the link and preview documents. That's that's one of the uh, integration. The second one, like I said, is advanced integration where uh, we have uh, we have written some custom components, uh, like, uh, which I will go through custom components uh, for uh, embedding the folder or a search result set from a document management system and embed them into a, a UI workspace, uh, workspace UI or in, on the portal. The advanced, the advanced integration provide some of the features that we are generally used to in a, DC, uh, in a DMS system, uh, like drag and drop more than one or more files, folder management and organization. So you can navigate documents by folder or by attributes on the document, search and filter, uh, facetted search, things like that. Uh, in addition to uh, one of the things that we do when we drag and drop, not only we move the document, but also providing some context of the service now record to the documents that get stored in DMS. Because ultimately uh, in DMS, when people go in, they would like to search and see some of the relevant service now data attached to the document. So they, they are reviewing some information. So we are, uh, that's something that we, we see that as one of the big requirements is to provide contextual data replication from service now record to the content management system. The last one is preview content without downloading. So uh, customers, we have customers that are several hundreds or, uh, hundreds or even thousands of documents related to a employee or a file or things like that. And, uh, they want to quickly preview documents before they can decide which document to open and do it. So the, the DMS widget provides that functionality of previewing content before downloading and working on it. Uh, I'm going to use a demo a demo scenario. Uh, this is something we see quite often. Uh, HR is one of the areas that we see quite a, a bit of requirements around uh, integration with DML. There's legal, then there's supply chain, other as well. But in this example, as you can see, we have service now for uh, case management. We have two two folks like employee and HR support agents uh, that are working on the requests. And then on the document management repository, we have HR policies, HR employee files, 
as you can see with the centralized repository, you are feeding content not only from ServiceNow, but also the uh, like uh, existing policies that are kept in the DMS system with HR department. And you could always have a HCM application like a Workday or Success Factors that, that is generating a lot of documents like onboard hiring or any other documents, employee promotion letters and things like that. All of that content that is being generated is being stored in the document management repository. So when an employee or an agent logs into the service now, they not only have access to the documents that are related to the case, but they have access to the, everything that's in the repository, like HR uh, policies that they can search or get a look at their only employee files that are being, the advantage of this is some of the activities they can they can do more than what they can do today from within service now by directly accessing the content from other systems. So in our integration, uh, we have seen that these are the few components that generally come across and uh, some or all of them are being used uh, depending on the customer use case. Uh, the typical, these are the high level ones that, that, that we have seen. The typical one we, I see is like a ServiceNow portal integration. On the ServiceNow portal, we see a search, uh, like a knowledge-based search. We could, uh, you know, customers are looking to not replicate their policy or knowledge-based content from a DMS into, into ServiceNow. So they would like to do a search. When they're searching for their knowledge base, they want the ServiceNow to search the DMS as well. So we have uh, done some integrations that we do some integrations the DMS so you can either use search even in the advanced search uh, AI search as well there are uh, sometimes requirement to do AI search uh, uh, extended to the DMS. The other one is a uh, document folder for a case or something that the users end users can can preview and look at their case content uh, one during the uh, flight of the case or at the end of the case. The similar thing for Polaris uh, or the next experience, uh, the, we, see, we see a lot of requirement around having a widget where you can see case related data. In addition to that, uh, agent assist, similar to the knowledge based search, agent assist, uh, you know, uh, uh, the same thing agents would like to see relevant documents, archived case documents or anything else that is that is being stored in DMS that will assist with the case. And the last one is uh, like uh, Charles said, the integration hub, that's one of the uh, uh, most important or the, or the core requirement. Every time you are in, uh, dealing with some documents within ServiceNow and are or want to integrate with the DMS, uh, the integration hub and REST messages is something that that is critical to moving documents, setting the context of the documents while moving it to ServiceNow or bringing back the documents uh, uh, from uh, retrieve the document from D DMS and getting the data. So here in this demo, I'm going to use Open Text as a sample repository. So here is a sample screenshot of the portal search. Uh, so if I'm searching for a leave policy, uh, I can see all the documents that are coming from the Open Text search, and this can be integrated with the AI search as well. Here is an example of a, a HR use case for request for leave absence. Uh, as you can see, there is a, this is all the uh, service now case data information. And there is a, instead of attachment, there is a special tab called documents. And within that, uh, here what we have done is we have created a widget or a UI where the users can see all the information that is related to the case. As you can see, the, the, when the case folder is created within, within, within a DMS system, the case number, the priority, HR uh, service type, all of that information is being used to create a, rele create a relevant content folder name and other metadata on the document. So this is the critical part of the integration. A lot of times keeping the context of the record that is generating the, uh, the case or any other documentation is, is very critical while, while having this kind of integration. Uh, this is the agent view for the same thing. So you can have HR case here, and then you have this uh, custom widget that uh, that we built uh, that that can give the contextual information about about the case, and all the documents are uh, being displayed from here. Uh, next is agent assist. This is a similar. So I'm going to switch to the demo to show show some of the UI, and then we can go back into the the. To the further discussion of what should the what should the developers or integrators consider while 
uh, what should be the design consideration by doing this kind of implementation? And these are some of the basic spoke actions that are a must when you are integrating any document management system, like upload document, create, delete folder, create folder with paths, with, so you can dynamically create a folder path based on the metadata and the service now record, apply any metadata on the documents, uh, and user group management, because one of the key things that happens in a, in these kind of uh, integrations is <clears throat> you have to ensure that the ServiceNow is a system of record for the actual that's driving the business process and uh, the permissions on the request and the other artifacts that are being generated is being driven by ServiceNow for most part. So how do you make sure that that access control and security model gets propagated to the DMS so the users cannot come back and look at it from a different uh, uh, applications? While that's coming up, I just want to point out, like, and I said this in the chat, but I really love workflow information from ServiceNow, the case number, the customer, that sort of thing, turning into inputs in, in the content management system to help sort and manage the files, the business rules being managed at the source of those files, and then in turn, the workflows having to honor those business rules. That's like the perfect better together. Neither side has the full picture of what's going on together. You do, and you can have a fully managed solution. I love that. Thank you, Charles. Uh, so here we have a sample uh, workspace for a, a HR request. Uh, here we, I have a leave of absence that I was showing on the screenshots. Uh, this is the standard attachments uh, interface. So uh, there are. Uh, so what we have done is uh, we we provide a document management widget as a custom component. As you can see, while I'm working on the case one eleven zero four, I have I have access to all the information that was being generated in the case. So let's say I want to add some documentation into the into the documentation. I want to add new files or preview. So I can go uh, look at the document content. I can see that there, there is some information here. Uh, now I want to go. I want to filter all the document. I want to look at all the document that are there. I can do a filter, and I can see there are documents. Apply. I will see there are a couple of documents there. Uh, if there are office documents, I can select something and then apply and I can filter and facilitate search. I can refine the, the information. So let me start by just dragging and dropping some information. I want to put new documents into correspondence. I can just go ahead and then just say there is a is the approval, approval letter I want to add into the correspondence. I can just put it here. So when I'm doing it, as you can see that there is already a document that was already generated and I have a new version that I want to drag and drop. So it, uh, it says there's a version. I can quickly, quickly add version and upload. So this, this enables me to do a simple uh, keeping the different revisions of the documents during the case. Uh, there is a search. so. Basically, you can you can search for content from here, or as uh, as I was saying, when we are creating this folder, we have all the information related kind of relevant to the case right in the name. But also, if I look at the properties, see here is all the HR case related, uh, like case ID, the date it was open, service, what is the state, what is the priority and things like that. So all the information can be copied over and this can be updated as the case progresses to the to the state, uh, to the life cycle within ServiceNow. So the, let me, and also I, let me go look at the preview. So if I'm on this document, I can just preview the document. This is, this is, the, and then 
these are different things. If, if there is a annotations are allowed or redactions are allowed, users can annotate, redact. Depending on the DMS functionality, you can do a lot of advanced features while while doing your workflow. So, question for you on that as far is that document you just brought up going through ServiceNow or being processed by ServiceNow? In yeah, that's a great question. None of this is being processed by ServiceNow. It completely bypasses the ServiceNow. Uh, so we are we are directly interacting real time within the within the within the content server in the DMS itself. So that is one of the big things about uh, about this integration is it bypasses the ServiceNow. So the size limitations. So one of the patterns that we see is customers always are you downloading the document to ServiceNow and opening up from within ServiceNow? It does not. It goes directly. The interaction is direct with uh, with the DMS, so all the features that that way we can give all the features that are uh, that are available within within DMS. So this preview, like I can have a AutoCAD drawing here, and I can open that in preview and redact and annotate, or it takes and redact and annotate directly from here. I don't I don't need to come into service now. Just think about how many design options that opens up. The document's not being processed by service now. In a lot of cases, rules and regulations refer to the content of the document. That document must be in a certain location. The metadata, which is what a case is around that document, doesn't tend to have as strict of rules. Like you got a nice ability to manage really complex business uh, rule scenarios or regulatory scenarios because of that feature. Yes, and also you uh, other things you can do is you can literally get all the features like like I like I showed earlier we have versions of the document I can go look at view versions I can I can look at all the information that I have here and if I'm going to the properties I can even see the audit trail so things sometimes when people are reviewing a document they want to see what was done earlier on these documents uh, those can be done here. I can see how many versions are there, and then I can see what is the, what was the audit, who uploaded it, what time, when was the version added, all this information, when it was classified and uploaded the first time, things like that. All the features of DMS can be, and if it's a CAD drawing, all the X references and everything else that, that are there on the system. So as an agent, uh, you know, one of the big things is we can review the existing documents, generate new documents as part of the case. They can be stored here and then can send be sent back, link them back into the case and send it to the end user. The other other uh, integration option is an agent assist. So here is an agent assist that we have built. So as you can see, this agent assist is, uh, is modified to out of the box uh, service now, such as the local knowledge base. Uh, what we have done is we not, we added the DMS and also the knowledge base as one of the options. So if I so it is querying and retrieving the data from both sides. So wherever there's a document, you can see these are all coming from from the DMS system. And then if I'm just going to filter, want to look local knowledge base, I can I can filter to these which are stored in service now. I want to go in the DMS policies, I can look at here. And as you can see, there are some cases that were created earlier and stored, archived or stored in in, in service in DMS. They, they also come up. I can look at the old cases like this way as well. And in for some cases, uh, for some cases, when the documents are already there in in, in service now for some reason and they need to be classified and put into the Put into the service, put into the DMS. There is a couple of ways we can automate to move them based on the case information, or we can give the end user an option to classify them into a DMS. So they can classify the documents. If if this one needs to go into the archive or goes into the uh, DMS system, they can select and they can discuss. They can decide what kind of a document it is, and all of this is configurable. And then we can classify the select bit and send it. So these get filed within the within the DMS system. So one last thing I want to show here was in the agent assist itself, which I forgot to show is uh, so 
So when I have this document, I want to share this document with the with the sorry. When I have this document, I want I want to show uh, share with the with the end user. There is an option to just attach as a link, and then uh, this the advantage of this is we the user can get the links to the uh, policy files. We can attach this as an attachment as well. So in this way, the agent can directly provide links to the documents within the within the DMS system that the end user can consume uh, as part of the case uh, case processing. Okay. I want to quickly jump before I go back to my demonstration. There is a similar interface for the portal. Uh, as you can see, for the same leave request, uh, the documents are here. A similar integration. Uh, one of the key things is when the user logs in as a as a as an end user, all their permissions and all their uh, their context is uh, DMS is aware of their context and only documents that they are allowed to see will they can see. It's the same interface and the users can, we can control what the user can do, cannot do uh, based on their uh, roles and things like that. I think that's it for my demo. I'm going to switch back to the... presentation. Yeah, this is my last slide, the design considerations, what, what we see that but what we get asked the most and how do we how do we, like what do we consider while doing these kind of integrations uh, so one of the big questions like charles was asking was is it a real real time or is there sync between documents between service now and dms so uh, you know all of this integration if you are using the ui widgets it's real time you're directly accessing the content you're bypassing the whole service now so uh, so that's that's one of the things we need to always make sure that it is it is accessing directly and sometimes they, you know, based on whether every end user has access to the DMS directly or, so it, it depends on, depending on that, sometimes we might have to sync it back into, bring it back into ServiceNow and display documents. But most of the time we see is people preferring a real-time access. Uh, the second design consideration to look at is context and configuration flexibility. So it's very critical. It's critical to pass on uh, some of the ServiceNow record data into the, uh, into the DMS system. So when you are showing content within within a service now, uh, whether it's a search or whether it is a, a agent assist or even even a case related documents, uh, you know the the integration should be able to get the context from service now, either pass it or even use it for searching, making sure that only the content that's relevant to a case or content to some kind of a request is searched and retrieved, not just a folder, but it could be even pure search criteria and display the list of documents and when you are passing the context context information from service now uh, uh, it is very important to decide what information should be passed on you know you can't pass too much or you can pass too little so a lot of our time is spent on deciding what is the critical metadata that is required for search or decision making that needs to be replicated if if you are replicating too much then there is a uh, ev or everything. The problem is then there is a lot of maintenance and also like a performance and other other requirements and duplication of data. Uh, the next is the uh, integration scope and direction. So should it be uh, should the integration decide only the anything that happens in service now and only that data gets replicated to document management system, or do you want any changes in document management system to trigger some kind of a case updates? Uh, within service now let's say on a case uh, there could be users who are hr users in in our example could be uploading new documents within dms without uh, doing it through service now so should it create a case update in service now or should it pro provide a, a you know a general log entry saying that there is a new attachment in the system so those are the things that need to be uh, looked at 
And typically, uh, the more bidirectional is the more complex it gets. 99% uh, of the cases we have seen that service now is the one that is uh, that is being used as the main system of engagement, and that drives a lot of the a uh, lot of the information that gets replicated from ServiceNow to document management and not the other way around, even the workflow triggering or review process, things like that. Another big function that, uh, that takes a lot of discussion is security and access control. Uh, uh, there are policies and access control set up in DMS. There are access policies and control set up in ACL set up in ServiceNow. So which, which takes control and under what context and which one governs the overall ACL process? So how do you make sure the, the controls are, uh, you know, if, if in a DMS you have certain groups or users that have access and but they are removed within a, within a request process. So that, how, do, how do you make sure those get updated? Also, there is a dynamic element in the, in the request process. Every request has a requester. How do you dynamically add a requester to the document control system? Uh, as a as a uh, without having adding it to a, a pre existing group and things like that, so there are or assigned groups. The assigned groups can be dynamic and can be changed during the flow of the request within service. Now, how do you dynamically change that permissioning on the on the DMS so nobody can go in if they are not part of the assigned group? So there's a lot of uh, design uh, decisions and then uh, integration uh, patterns that have to be looked at to see how how granular and secular security can be managed. Single sign-on, uh, as you saw in the demo, like, you know, there is, the user didn't have to log into the DMS system or there is a, so uh, how do you make sure there's a seamless integration, a single sign-on integration? There's a different patterns, like OR2 is one of them, but there are other SAML and so how do you make sure there's a, a seamless integration? And uh, every DMS system is different. They support different protocols or different patterns. So we have to work through all those and uh, ensure that uh, you know those are those are accessed properly. Uh, the other one that I missed, big one, is uh, is a lot of times uh, people have on-prem document management system and service now in the cloud. The document management system is not sometimes is sometimes not exposed to the external world. So how do you integrate uh, or have an integration with the DMS system that's on-prem? Is it mid-server? How do you access the UI? Uh, whether what if they are on VPN, what if they are not in network or outside network while we're using service now. So those are all the questions that come in uh, during the design and the integration uh, session, uh, architecture sessions. And the last one is maintenance and updates. Uh, the two systems are uh, being upgraded. Uh, every DMS has their own version cycle and uh, service now has their own version cycle. How do you make sure that with every upgrade, the integration is working? And even within service now, a uh, lot of times this instances get refreshed from a, a test to dev and QA to dev or a prod to QA. So how do you make sure these integrations are not keeping any hard-coded links uh, or node IDs of the of DMS system? How can it be? Uh, one, we don't want any hard-coded information in the, in the how when we are designing the system. The second thing is how do you make sure the configurations don't get overridden every time there's a refresh between a prod and a QA? So these are some of the things that we see. Uh, these are the top seven or eight things that I see uh, every time we do a integration project. Um, that's it for my presentation. Thank you, Charles. Thanks, team. Yeah, and just a point on that, like, like stay on this slide for a bit. I love that you're talking about this as design considerations. Um, like in the comment thread, I think one of our big things is like, when do you want information in a document? When do you want it out of it? And, and that's part of what my part of the, the this uh, session, that, that's where I'm thinking about. What I love about this slide and, and how you presented uh, your solution um, is there's all these other things that depending on your requirements, you may need to consider and you need options and flexibility on how to, to address them. And again, this isn't a particular endorsement um, from ServiceNow to, towards Reva Solutions beyond we're partners and all of that already. But I, as an architect, like how Reva Solutions approach this set of questions. And if you are using other document libraries that, that maybe they don't integrate with, you can see Terry's been active in the uh, chat here, like if you've got requirements, come to Reva Solutions on them and you can they can can work with you on that. 
But there's also other document management systems that, that Reva doesn't integrate with and maybe won't ever. There's also other um, solutions that integrate with those other document management systems. When you're going to those, you should be thinking about these things that, that Reva's thinking about here and listing on this slide. This is an awesome list. And, and what I think you'll find is with those more complex requirements, if you don't consider this stuff up front and design it up front, you're going to get clobbered because you you, you broke some of those requirements down the line. Um, so, so again, I, I really appreciate how Reva Solutions thinks about the, this problem space. Thank you, Charles. That's very, very good commentary. I appreciate that. And I just want to second that and what Charles said. I mean, you know, be, being in the document management space, by the way, my name is Nitin Dharra, Enterprise Architect, works very closely with Charles and John. Uh, so I can relate this concept and how seamlessly this, uh, you know, fluid integration that you achieved, uh, Ishwar, kudos to you. I mean, now this is a phenomenal job. I mean, you know, so a lot of learning, a lot of good information, and this design considerations uh, slide kills it. I mean, you know, so thank you. Thank you, Nitin. That's nice of you. Any last questions uh, before we close the meeting a couple minutes early? Wow, perfect timing on everybody. I'll just take one quick minute, Charles, to talk about our next meeting and, um, and reach out to anybody that has anything to share in this area. But I, I think the next meeting or possibly um, over the next three meetings, we'll start bringing in some of the people from our change management team we have some discussions on modern change management as well as release management falls into that. And that's been something that has been on the backlog of Charles and I for a long time that um, we've had a lot of questions, not about the demand part, like ingesting a demand and how you massage the demand and turn that into work, but the release part after it's all built. And so we're going to have um, some guest speakers on that over the next few meetings. If you have anything to participate, Anything to contribute to those, uh, please drop me an email and we'll have you um, either come in and talk about a part or talk about some particular struggles in that area. But again, anything you want to ask the change management product managers, uh, please send it my way. That's it, Charles. I think we're good. Unless you have any closing comments. I think we're good. Um, as you can tell, we're trying to turn this from being more lecture into more interactive. And some of that interaction can happen out, outside the meeting in the forum. So uh, let's try and utilize those resources. And we want to hear what's interesting you and what resonates with you and what challenges you're having. So with that, thank you.